Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode. Just finished up here, getting a nice workout in, and as many of you follow me on Instagram will know, I did my first ever night competition last night. It was a two-gun competition, so both pistol and rifle. Very fun match, probably some of the best fun that I've had shooting in a very, very long time. I've never shot at night before, so it was really nice to actually see how some of this stuff runs. It was also windy, rainy, super dark, and we we're in the Las Vegas desert way out in Boulder City. So got to test out some of the gear, some of the lights that I have on because I've never shot at night, which was really nice. Wanted to kind of go over really quick some of the gear that I took, that way you guys can get an idea of what we're running. So the rifle that we're running here, we'll drop this down here, maybe you can see a little better. So the rifle that we were running was my 11 and a half inch BCM slash 17 design. So this is a complete BCM upper. It's their MCMR 10 rail, BCM barrel, BCM upper receiver, and the bolt carry group is also BCM. The lower receiver is a 17 design lower receiver. Picked this up at one of my local FFLs. It has a BCM grip on it. This is a B5 stock, which funny enough, I was so nervous for the competition itself. I usually run my stock uh, about there, but again, wasn't really paying attention because how nervous I was. I ended up running the entire match with my stock inward, and I was wondering why I felt so close to the optic. Speaking of the optic, this is a Hollow Sun 403R with a 2 MOA dot. You guys can see it there, sorry about that. Hollow Sun 40, or HS 403R with a 2 MOA dot. This optic's only like $150. Uh, but I wanted to run it to see how long ago before I broke it and it's still running strong I've had this for almost a year now. As you can see it's pretty dinged up I've actually dropped this optic from about three feet in the air directly on the top of it on gravel and It is still intact glass is clear it held zero So this optic is working just great and so far I've had yet to spend a thousand dollars on a red dot optic because this hundred fifty dollar optic is doing the exact same thing so that is that. Uh, the light here out front is a Streamlight ProTac with their pressure switch here. Probably not the best pressure switch and light combo, but it works for me, it's fine. This is the Polonium 556 suppressor. This is their full size suppressor. It is direct mounted or direct threaded. I don't have one of those fancy QD mounts. This seems to work just fine and I haven't had carbon luck just yet because I do sort of take this off every once in a while after I go shooting just to make sure I am able to actually take it off without having to take a blowtorch to it. I believe that's it. The charging handle is just a mil-spec charging handle. Nothing fancy here. Same thing with the safety selector, mil-spec 90 degree throw and a mil-spec trigger. Again, pretty basic. I don't really do too many fancy things. Uh, the foregrip is also a BCM. So that's the 11 and a half inch SPR that I took. The rifle, the pistol was my Glock 17 MOS. This gun is loaded because it always stays loaded when it's in the house. This is my Glock 17 MOS with a X300 light out front. This is a Holosun 507C. Everything is stock. Stock trigger, the grip's not stippled. I do have suppressor height sights on it, which hindsight, probably don't need those at all. The red dot's more than durable enough, probably don't need any backup sights, but whatever, that was $90 I probably could have saved by just keeping the regular sights on the gun. Uh, again, this gun shoots very well, solid, has maybe three to 4,000 rounds through it. No issues there, this one ran just great. I was running the uh, Magpul 30 round P mags for the rifle. I was just shooting 55 grain at the match. Let's see, I did bring my fix-it sticks, which I actually did have to use because one of my Mars carriers did become a little loose during the match. So, wife got me this for my birthday. Probably one of the better gifts I've ever received. Very nice of her. And, oh, let's do it really quick. The belt setup that I brought. So, this is the belt that I took. This is my T-Rex Arms speed belt. It's all black with a Safari Land. I believe this is their 6930 holster, level two retention holster, level three, I'm not sure. On a QLS and a UBL mid-rise leg strap, a T-Rex Arms actual leg strap. Mars carries that I bought T-Rex Arms. These are really black, but I spray painted them green because OD green is my favorite color, or Ranger green. 
This is my med kit that I brought and all the, con all the items that are actually contained in this med kit are on the floor right now. And then on the side here, I do usually carry a tourniquet. However, the tourniquet I was using for something else. And so I don't know why I didn't put it back on here, but good thing is a lot of the guys that I was running with, they all have tourniquets on them. So, but we still need to get the tourniquet back on here. Uh, the med kit, a lot of people ask that I carry in the med kit. Essentially, this is it. Two rounds of gloves here, because one is none, two is one. And then this is it. I carry some four by four gauze along with some gauze that's not four by four, but just essentially gauze that I can pack a wound with. And then this is an Israeli pressure bandage. So basically everything to stop bleeding. Tourniquet is usually on the belt as well. So tourniquet something, pack the wound, dress it with the compression dressing. That's kind of my philosophy, very simple. I know how to use all of this equipment very, very well. So that's what I stick to. I did bring some extra magazines. However, I didn't end up needing them. These are, uh, again, 30 round P, uh, P, P mag magazines. Mag Pro P mag magazines. This is a 20 rounder that I usually use on the SPR. I thought I was gonna use it, but I didn't end up using it. Uh, the bag that I carried everything in was my Everly Stock Freefall 3000. This bag is very, very solid. It's rigid. It has this, uh, I don't know what this is, this brace. That's metal, I believe, or whatever this is, but it keeps the bag really firm and stiff, so it doesn't collapse on itself. I'm actually able to carry a full-size rifle, my long-range rifle with a 318 scope on it in the side pocket here, sticking out of the bag itself. This bag is very durable, has many pockets, but this is kind of what I ran to put all my gear in. Um, that's essentially it. I did bring my cleaning kit. This is a DACA, Magpul DACA pouch, it has lube, boar snake, towels, everything I need to clean my rifle and my pistols in here. So yeah, that's kind of what I brought to the match. Um, again, nothing fancy, just wanted to make a quick video breaking down some of the gear that I took. I know a lot of people really want to know what was in my med kit. That's really all I keep in there. I don't keep needle decompression needles or decompression needles in my bag. I don't keep chest seals in my bag. Why? I just, I don't feel it's necessary. Honestly, I don't really know what much those things are gonna do, you know, if someone gets shot in the chest, it's, we're kind of far from a hospital, so I think it's fairly futile. I think more commonly, what I can fit in this pack is things to stop extremity bleeds, and so that's kind of what I just took preference in. Even though, I'm sure everyone has their reasons as to why they carry what they carry, but for me, as someone who works in emergency medicine, I believe this is more than enough, if ever needed at all and really don't want to pack too much on it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, just want to make a quick one for you, updating you on the gear that I took. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.